Hello everybody, welcome to lecture 11 of our course Computing Ethics and Society. We will continue chapter 4, the intellectual property. And in this lecture, we're gonna discuss the responses to copyright infringement. Let's start with the responses from the content industries. There are many ideas about protecting the copyright of these softwares. These ideas include the following. First of all, putting an expiration date on the software. Second idea, using a specific device, it's called dangle, uh, by connected to the computer. Third, preventing the copy using copy protection mechanism. Another, using activation or registration key or product key to be able to use that software and so on. Now let's talk about piracy, software piracy. Some countries have a law that protect the copyright, but some countries do not have. There are many problems regarding software piracy. One problem is the intellectual property or the, the copyright uh, is not an issue in some countries. Another problem the countries that do not have software industry often have high piracy rate. In addition, pirated copies could be exported to countries with strict laws. Also, economic sanctions often penalize legitimate businesses, not those they seek to target. Another responses include banning, suing, and taxing. To ban technology or delay technology, we may need low suits. Apply tax on the digital media could be useful in some cases. There are something called DRM or Digital Rights Management. This is a collection of techniques that control uses of intellectual property in digital formats. DRM includes hardware and software schemas using encryption. There are flexibility to specify what a user may do with it by the producer. And uh, there are some uh, companies use DRM such as Apple, Microsoft, Sony, etc. In the Digital Millennium Copyright Act of 1998, they discuss two main topics, anti-circumvention and safe harbor. In the first one, they prohibit circumventing technological access controls and copy prevention systems. For the safe harbor, protect websites from lawsuits for copyright infringements by user of a site. U.S. courts have banned technologies uh, even though it has legitimate uses, while courts in other countries have not. Protesters published the code as a part of creative works. Then the US courts eventually allowed publishing of uh, this technology but prohibited manufacturers of DVD players from including it in their products. Smart cell phones, tablets, game machine and other devices have mechanisms to prevent installation of software or use of services that the maker of the device does not support or approve. Cracking 
Such mechanism is sometimes called jailbreaking, unlocking, or routing. Save Harbor. There is something called takedown notices, by which a website will not be in violation. But these notices may violate fair use some have been issued against small portions of video being used for educational purposes. Evolving business models As a legal a mean to provide the copyrighted works to a consumer with low prices in order to uh, decrease the infringement, some businesses make agreement with the copyright owners to make their works av uh, available on their sites and share the investment or share the revenue of this work. The last topic we're gonna talk about in this lecture is the cloud storage and copyright. There is a controversial questions about this. The first one is copying legally purchased files to and from the cloud a fair use? Second, will the companies operating the cloud services have any responsibility for unauthorized content their customers store and share? Actually, there is no agreed and certain opinion for these issues. Since the copyright holders do not see what is stored, they don't have the option of sending takedown notices. This is in general all issues in this lecture and see you in the next lecture. Goodbye.